Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm Zach Peterson. I'm a technical consultant with Altium. And today we're gonna to talk about something with power supplies, specifically, how do you connect ground regions in your power supply? Now, in general, there are two types of power supplies, non-isolated power supplies and isolated power supplies. They're both used for different purposes and they're both used for different power levels. Generally, an isolated power supply will be its own unit, although you could put it on a dedicated board or you could include it with the rest of your system on your board. So there's this big question about grounding with this type of system, and that's what we're gonna look at today. So let's go ahead and get started. In general, we have two classes of power supplies or two types of power supplies, non-isolated and isolated. In an unisolated or non-isolated power supply, it's pretty simple. We basically just have our chips, and we have some passives and then we typically have some kind of input here so here's our plus and then here's our minus this is going to connect to some like dc or ac source and this is going to regulate out to dc or possibly ac within this you actually have a complete connection between the ground side on here, the DC output side or the AC output side, and then this input side. So this is an unisolated or non-isolated power supply. Basically what that means is that you don't have galvanic isolation or separation between the input power stage and then the output power stage. This is generally what you put onto a PCB. If you have just a chip regulator, it takes an unregulated, let's say DC, outputs regulated DC, then it's generally a non-isolated power supply. So in terms of safety, that's actually not really a problem. These types of things, their goal is not necessarily to produce a ton of current. Their goal is to basically take what might be a DC signal that is very noisy and then to output a signal that is nice and clean and has minimal noise where possible. Or it might be taking in you know, a DC signal that has ripple, so maybe it's the output from a rectifier. In this case, you might have, you know, you'd have a big cap here as your input cap, uh, then you'd have your regulation stage, final filtering, and then ideally you would output something that is just a flat DC, or possibly if it's a switching regulator, it's got a little bit of ripple superimposed on that DC level. So that is in a nutshell, a non-isolated power supply. Now, an isolated power supply. So these can be a little tricky because in an isolated power supply, it's not like the example that we just showed, you actually have some level of isolation between the input power side and the output power side. What that means is that I actually do have some separation between my ground regions. This is literally a plane region. This could also literally be a plane region. And then you have to wonder, how do you get your input power over here, over to your output side over here? This is generally done with the use of a transformer. So you'll have a transformer that basically bridges this gap. And the way it transfers power over to the other side is inductively. It does it through the magnetic field. So either I have AC coming in here to the transformer, or I have switching DC coming in here to the transformer. And that switching action in the primary side of the transformer will induce a current on the output side, which then is typically smoothed and filtered, and then that is output as generally a DC. This could be an inverter, the inverter might invert it into you know a switching signal or a square wave or whatever it may be. But generally this is what's happening with an isolated power supply. Typically what happens is if you have, let's say, AC coming in, or maybe you have uh, DC with two wires plus uh, an earth connection, you've got at least two ground regions, okay? So if you look on some reference designs, what you'll tend to see is they'll label this side PGND for this ground net, okay? So primary ground, I've also seen it called power ground, um, I think they intend for it to mean primary ground. Here, this will sometimes be written as SGND or secondary ground because it's on the secondary side of the transformer. And then there may be another ground connection. So there may be a third ground connection and that would be your enclosure, which is then your frame ground or your chassis ground, okay? 
And so we now have to ask, well, how do we link all these grounds together and why do we even want to do that? Well, part of the reason we want to do that is because we would like to make sure that number one, this ground region does not oscillate with respect to this region. And so that's actually kind of important. The reason for that is due to noise. So if this ground region is oscillating and has a potential difference with respect to this region, there's always going to be electrostatic coupling. But when that oscillates, it then causes emission of an electromagnetic wave. And it's that emission that could be at very low frequency and could then get measured somewhere else in the system or create some interference. And maybe it doesn't interfere with anything else on your board just in terms of like crosstalk or noise. Maybe it does, but it could also cause you to fail an EMC test. It all depends. There's also a matter of safety. If there's ever anything that fails on this board, uh, we would like to make sure that if there isn't like an ESD event that it ends up dumping all of its power into the frame or into the chassis rather than interfering with any of the other circuitry that's on this board. So that's gonna protect all your electronics. So that's one of the reasons that this ground region or like the frame is sometimes called like a safety ground. This is actually not meant to carry any current. So I should be equal to zero the current in the chassis should be equal to zero at all times. It's not meant to carry any current because if it is an earth connection, it's gonna go back somewhere in your circuit. Let's say you're plugged into the wall. It's gonna go back somewhere into your circuit, into your, into your mains, and it's gonna connect back to ground somewhere. So it's not really meant to carry current unless it's a safety issue. But the other reason for that is if this chassis is carrying some current and the user handles it and interacts with the chassis, well, now they could actually feel some of that current and be electrocuted. So maybe it's not gonna be dangerous uh, if it was you know, really small currents, um, but it's still annoying and you know, nobody wants to pick up a device and get shocked every time they pick it up. If you have a poor uh, connection back to earth here, so you know, eventually this goes back to true ground, if this connection is really poor or it's high impedance, if you're over here and you touch this, current's gonna flow through you instead of going back to ground. How do we make sure we offset all of these uh, different potentials? So generally on the input side, what you might do is you might have a mounting hole right here. And this mounting hole can then connect back to the chassis ground. That's gonna set the potential, or the ground potential I should say, of the PNG and D region to the same level as your chassis. And if there is an earth connection, it's gonna set it all back to earth. One of the reasons that you do that is because this is sometimes used as part of an EMI filter. There are EMI filters that can be placed on the input side of your power system. And then that noise can be dumped into this ground to take it out of the system and it will basically go back to here instead of going through the transformer and then propagating all the way to your DC output. In addition to whatever, let's let's say you're you know plugging in with a power cord, in addition to whatever ferrite might be on that power cord, you can actually have an EMI filter here on the input. That input will use this as a ground connection to take out any noise. And you know, you're probably thinking, hey man, you just said that you don't want any current flowing through here. That's true, you don't want any current flowing through here. However, if you put this connection back here and you're doing it as part of a high frequency EMI filter, you're gonna get very low levels of current going out of the device directly back through the power input and eventually to ground. So when the user is over here on this side and they're acting with the device, they're actually not gonna experience any of that current going through the chassis because it's gonna go immediately back to ground. That's what's going on on this input side. So next, what happens between these two uh, regions and how do we get them to be at the same potential. If you pull open a switching power supply, sometimes what you will see in a switch mode power supply is you will see a certain type of capacitor that bridges these two regions. This particular capacitor is called a Y capacitor or a Y type capacitor. So here, this is my secondary ground connection. This is my primary ground connection. Like anything in engineering, um, including in PCB layout, it's full of trade-offs. And here, one of the trade-offs that you have is eliminating noise, which was the main reason that we wanted to do this, but also balancing safety. So power supplies is one of those areas where you need to kind of balance, do I want to focus on eliminating noise or do I need to balance for safety? Now, there can be some leakage current 
just call it I sub L, that exists across this particular uh, connection. And this leakage current can then flow out through the DC output, which is referenced to this secondary ground region. So that leakage current could be a very small, annoying shock, or it could actually be dangerous, or it could destroy something that is very sensitive. If this is being used for precision measurements, so like if this is a power supply that's going to power a system that then needs to be used for precision measurements, this adds noise into your power. So this would need to be filtered out somehow. So there are all sorts of different reasons that you might want to overcome this problem with leakage current while also ensuring safety and preventing any of that leakage from then reaching the output and interacting with the user. So how do we do all of that? You could make a connection here through two capacitors back to earth. By doing this, essentially what you've done is you put these two capacitors into a nice little arrangement with this fringing capacitance. So this is a very small capacitance which means that this connection right here, or this parasitic connection, I should say, that exists across these two planes is actually very high impedance. So what that means is that if there is an ESD event that dumps current into the secondary ground region, what's gonna happen is it's gonna flow through this intentionally placed capacitor and go back into the frame. That's exactly what we want. And if it should happen to also occur on the primary side, it will then also go back through and go to the frame. So this is two different ways to connect all this stuff together. And it's actually pretty, pretty standard in uh, class one and class two power supplies. So what I've done is I've compiled all of this into a blog post. It's in the description, click on that link if you wanna learn more about isolated power supplies and how these things are used in the PCB layout in order to make that connection back to the frame for safety in this case, or just in the case where we saw before, where we had just an intentionally placed capacitor between the two planes. So you're probably wondering, in terms of assembly or in terms of what you actually do in your PCB layout, how do you make this physical connection between primary ground and your chassis or your earth ground? Same thing over here, how do you make this connection physically? So you're not like taking the board and then laying a capacitor off to the side and then soldering the capacitor onto the chassis. That would be pretty ridiculous. So this is again where you could take advantage of your mounting holes. Let me just redraw my PCB real quick. This drawing is getting a little messy. If I have a mounting hole right here and I have a mounting hole right here, anytime I need to make that connection that makes a direct connection back to the chassis, I can use a plated mounting hole. So if this is metal and here we have a uh, plated through hole, here we have a plated through hole. What I can do is then in my chassis, let's say I have a threaded hole, I can put a screw. I can then screw this possibly through like a plastic standoff directly into the metal. And I can do the same thing over here. So now I've just mounted the board in the enclosure, I've provided the ground connection that I wanted, and then I can bridge the ground region itself back to the mounting hole by placing a capacitor. So this mounting hole will have some pad on it. It might not be directly connected to the actual ground plane or to the copper layer up here. But what you can do is you can just place a small capacitor that connects to the pad of your mounting hole and then connect the other end to your ground. Same exact thing over here. And that's by far the easiest way to make that connection between your board or your, you know, the copper in your board back to the frame ground. If you wanna do all this stuff in your own power supply design, or if you wanna integrate all this stuff onto another system that is going to include all your other components and just build a combined board, you can definitely do that. You gotta use the right layout tools. So go check out Circuit Maker. Circuit Maker is free to use. It has all the tools you need to do all of this stuff that we've been talking about. And it's a great tool that you can use to learn the process and the practice of PCB design before you move on to something more advanced like Altium Designer. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Leave your comments and questions in the comments section. Go check out that blog I mentioned in the description. We've got some other great blogs in there too. And definitely don't forget to call your fabricator. Thank you